there is an aspect in classical martial that you can call like this in Japanese, shōzō ryoku. So it's the power of the imagination. And in the word imagination, you have the word image. So actually, it's to visualize what you're doing, but at the same time to visualize what's happening, what might happen. If we look in the history of classical martial art, but not only, not only, you can find this in many, many other disciplines, but in the classical martial art, all the Ryuso, so the founder of different kind of Ryuha, whatever it is, uh, Isasacho Isai for the Tenshin Shoden Katori Shintoryu, Matsumoto Bizen no Kami for the Kashima Shinkageryu, Skarabukuden for the Kashima Shintoryu, or non, uh, Nenje, um, Nenami Jon for the Nenryu, uh, Aisu Ikosai, Kageryu, then of course Kami Izumi Seno Kami for Shinkageryu, and many other, Takeno Uchiryu, any kind. They all have a moment when it happened, it's during a certain moment of a very extreme critical practice. Mm. And during that moment, they are not two, they are alone. They practice alone in the most extreme thing. So they're gonna maybe fast, not eating, going in certain area, in a mountain, in a temple or a sanctuary and practice, 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 practice in order to reach a certain limit psychological and uh, psychological limit and physical limit and at that moment most of the time something happened it can be like a dream it can be uh, like a kind of inspiration and they find what they call the shigi gokui so the highest level the ultimate state of mind of practice but what is very interesting about this at first they are all have they all have the common a common background a common source of practicing alone and when you practice alone, ah, it's not just a doing pull-up, push-up. Uh, it's a little bit like shadow. You see in boxing or in karate, when they do the kata, which is very similar in the idea. It's to see against who you're fighting. Some's going to say it, it's an imaginary opponent, but it's still here. He's going to attack you. He's going to do like this. So here you can see the work of the mind, and the work of the mind through the body. Of course, it's not the reality, it's you and your brain. But the way you will practice, the way you will put your body through a, through a certain discipline should shape the mind to visualize correctly what you're doing. And the same, for example, in the way of uh, praying, in the way of doing meditation, there is a, visualize, a visualization about yourself and the way you breathe in order to understand and to sense instead of understand to sense, to measure what is working inside. Who are you? What are the part of the body that works on you, in you, for you, by you, with you, inside the technique? So visualize what you do. It's very important. Because if you don't visualize, you know, I like the word visualize because of course it comes from uh, Latin. And uh, uh, in the word visualize, for example, in French, visu vi visualiser, so visualize, you have also the idea of vision. So a vision, visualize it to have a vision. And vision, visualize, maybe with my accent, you don't, you, you hear it a little bit, you have the word V. In French, it means life. Huh? Spanish, la vida, for example. So uh, this, it's also because, of course, same, uh, um, same source in language, to visualize it's to put in life, to put in motion. In other words, to give life to something. Now, of course, reality is, <laughs> reality is the, the test. Reality is going to test if your vision was good or not. So we can also say that, for example, all the founder of those different Ryuha, Katori, Kashima, Shinkage, etc., etc., if their vision was wrong, well, they will die or maybe they could escape from the fight and uh, reconnect with that vis vision of them and remove, uh, yes, remove, erase what was not correct. Visualize is very important to visualize, but to not forget the very important things, it's the reality. When you visualize, do not forget that the reality will come to knock at your door and say, oh, really, you think it works? Huh? And that's very important. When you visualize, do not forget the reality. And if you visualize through the reality, then you can see a path 
free of practice, something that's going to transform you and shape you and look things in a different way. Well, life is it's not an easy thing and saying is easy. Uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, lying to everyone. There is, of course, uh, uh, up and down, twist and turn, different things. You have job, family. You can be sick. Sometimes you have uh, the great envy to great envy to practice. When it's the summer, you're ready to work out. When it's the winter, you stay home because it's cold. You don't really want to go. Of course, not everyone is like this, but one day you fell in love and you forget to go to practice. All these are part of the art because they are part of the life. Uh, how to keep the practice? Oh, this, this meaning of keiko, initio kangaede, means to reflect about the past, how they did in the past, how master of the past uh, lead their life, lead their practice, practice how they face adversities. In the history of master of the past, prophet, leader, uh, great men and women, men of, and women of vision, uh, artists, you have uh, many examples on how you can, for example, uh, live your life, shape your life, shape your vision, and of course, everything that mm, goes with shaping what you want. And if you have a strong aiming and a strong goal, you're going to have to work all um, the different aspects of your life, your aptitude, and shape yourself in order to reach that goal, to grasp it. But many, many, many things will come around in order to put you out of the way, out of the path. How you do this? Our well, first of thing, you need to understand that we human beings, we are the complete reflection of uh, inconstancy. So we are inconstant in many things. And try to find constancy inside. The life is complicated. So you have, first of all, to accept your own nature. You have to accept there's going to have moment with and not. And between this, to force yourself, because this is what discipline is. Uh, to force yourself to accept, to force yourself to uh, forge yourself, to shape yourself in order to elevate. And I don't want to say control your ego because it's a very uh, complicated phrase, but at least to understand you in order to see how deep you can go. And the more you go deep, the more you understand, the more you see that you want more, that you want to discipline more, you feel uh, also, that uh, in the case of the classical martial art, everything that are born between the 14th century, 16, 15, 16, and even beginning of 17, it's born in an insecure time, what we call, for example, Sengoku uh, Jidai, uh, Momoyama Azuchi, or even uh, earlier, Muromachi Jidai, etc. This is a moment of insecurity. And uh, those Ryuha, they are born in an insecure time in a troubled time, in an uncomfortable time. Why? Because in order to teach you how to endure, how to persevere, how to go through this. So in other words, if, for example, you feel that what you do is comfortable, it's easy, you go to the class uh, three times, two times per week, you do your workout, and when a problem happens in your life, in general, emotional things, a job, or the pandemic just recently, and you cannot face it. You can question the reason and the nature of your own practice. It should be the opposite. Because you practice something that should allow you to expect the unexpected, to expect the difficult times, the hard times, and then, then the value, like the nature of what you practice, change. And you become an example for the other, and at the same time, you become a very, um, how can I say, yes, you, you serve people with your knowledge, and with what you do. So how you can do, but just keep on trying. That's the only way. Uh, that's the only way. And here, the meaning of nintai, uh, to endure, to persevere, to go through. It's not just about few things that happen in life. It's the first thing you have to endure is yourself. There is this aspect of like shiki uh, shinobu, like your own, your own um, Conscience. Try to also enjoy your own conscience. Try to endure and to persevere from your from your own desire, your own your own envy. You can find this in many religion and philosophy um, dogma as well. You know, when you are a student, you expect that you, for example, you have practiced, you deserve the rank. 
all right? Uh, sometimes you heard, uh, please give me the rank when I'm worth it, when uh, I am at the level. Uh, there is also the aspect that uh, as a student, uh, because I study, I, uh, how can I say, I study this, I show I'm serious, so you should acknowledge the fact that I am a student. Uh, because I go to your class, because I pay my fee, because I, I'm here every day, I should be recognized as a student. Um, and this tells a lot about the, what I was talking about, the intention, the true nature of the intention behind the fact of study or practice. A true student doesn't expect uh, anything. And that's complicated because it comes with time. If you study, the fact of being able to study or the fact to have the chance to assist a class, hear uh, a word, an instruction, being able to see a practice, already this is a gift. Being able to study and use the body and copy, visualize, it's a gift. And on that, there is the result. Now, if you study in order to have a result, if you practice in order to reserve, which is not logical, you know, you, you practice, for example, if you do sports, you're going to have to push your performance because you have a certain date where you're going to do, who knows, a competition, a match, etc. And then you win, you're the champion and all you lose or something like that. And most of you have I've heard the phrase like, we are mainly never enough prepared to the defeat because we look so much the victory. Uh, it's the same in a job, when you do a work and you receive the money and the money doesn't uh, really um, suit, fit your expectations. Oh, why you pay me that? I did that kind of job. And this is also connecting with the ego. 90% of the case, we do something and we expect more than we think we should receive, what we should deserve. And th this is the same thing. I think being able to practice and find in the practice, already the fact of practicing is a result on itself. And not the goal, I practice, I receive this. Here you go deep in classical martial arts, here you deep in any kind of things. Being able to practice without looking for the result. Being able to practice without waiting, expecting that the master see you. you see, if you practice, you do, in a, yeah, I, I hope he's looking at me and you do the technique and from the corner of the eyes, you say, oh, he's looking at me, he's looking at me. He tells that you are more, you want just a, an improvement, you want to be recognized. And what about the practice itself? What about the art? What about the technique? Huh? This is what have shaped the art and what give the master the title of master. And because he forget himself in the front of the art. He forgot himself in the front of his own practice. It doesn't exist. It's more like... A, is ego support the art, is ego support the practice and not the practice that support the ego or the art that support the ego. Same with the rank. I have a rank. I am, I am fifth dan. I am ten dan. I am menkyo kaiden. I am master. Say, I and the master after. I mean, look, if you look, of course, it's, it's linguistic. I master. So me first, then master. I shihan. Me, etc., etc. What about the opposite? Huh? What about the opposite? To put the one who did everything for you, gave everything, even if you don't see it, because you don't have the eyes, because you don't have the heart, and you don't have the knowledge, you don't see it. So what you want, like a kid, hey, do you see me? Of course, he saw you. He saw you the first time you came in his dojo. He saw you the first time you enter. He knows. And if he didn't see you first time, and if he doesn't know, he's not a master. So at the same time, maybe he don't deserve you as a disciple, if you're the right disciple, but don't get me wrong. Huh? We all think we are the good disciple and the best disciple and the right disciple. And when, for example, uh, we don't receive or we are not, uh, we are ignore, then we think, come on, after everything I did for you? <laughs> I like that story. I like that story. For example, this is everything a master gives you, all right? The teaching, etc., etc. He's helping you even when you don't understand. He's giving you things even when you don't see. And at the moment there is a problem, you know what you said? You said, what did you do for me? And uh, all the knowledge and everything is went out. Well, 
Sometimes you have to ask yourself if you are worthy for the knowledge. Because study is not enough. You study by interest. You study to become good, all right. Because you want to be recognized, all right. Because you want to be the next one, the wannabe, you want to live large, to be a martial artist, good. With time and life and practice and by study more and more about the history and how they did in the past, you have many examples of people who tried the same things and it didn't work well for them. So I think seeing this in that point of view tell a lot about, of course, what it is to be a student, the equality of the student, and at the same time how to find a master, and what is a master too. Sometimes we have, uh, let's say, the, a roof, intellectually, uh, physically, and of course with age, uh, if we reach a roof, for example, if you look at sports martial arts, for example, maybe, you know, 20s, you are the prime until 30s, and then from 30s to 40s, you have, let's say, the still good 10 years, but when you start in the 40s going lower, physically you cannot, especially if um, you don't cultivate this very simple mind, but complicated at the same time. You don't cultivate that learning aspect, go deep aspect. You, you try to not keep that kind of mind who said, oh, I rich, oh, I know, I have the rank, I know. It's very difficult to remove that self-esteem to think that, okay, I reach. So once you reach this uh, limit, what's the choice? You quit, you stop, or you just, uh, you know, stay comfortable. I know I don't need to go, I don't need to prove myself anymore, which is a little bit also um, a kind of a, a proof of ego. We always need to prove ourselves. Life is, a, life is a test. Life will test your intention. The practice, actually, the practice on itself, the art you choose, will test your intention. Through that master, through life, through everything. Through love, through the betray, through everything. It will test you and see if, when you said, oh, I'm going to follow him, I'm going to follow the heart, this is the heart of my life, then you quit. Now ask yourself when you quit. Is it you who quit or the heart who quit you? Or the heart who give you the chance and obviously you didn't have enough endurance, psychological strength, maybe passion, maybe heart to go through this. How you do that? The first things like any kind of student, like any kind of human being, it's to be, to keep the critical questioning of yourself. Of course, it is easy to question the question, to question and to critic the master. Of course, it is important to keep a critical mind. But the critical mind you have on the other should first be turned towards yourself. Toward the way you move, how you move, how long, on which term. And this is very important. Very important. And at the moment you think you understood, at the moment you think, oh, this is the way it is, this is how it is, I think I get it, etc. This is the moment where the critic needs to be turned toward yourself. And to be very honest toward yourself. N honest to be honest in the front of your capacity. Said, oh, I'm not flexible. Oh, I cannot do this. Oh, I cannot learn this. Oh, it took too much time. You already put limit and you already put yourself in failure. Like I said a little bit before, classical martial art are born, are born into critical time. If you look, for example, a great sportsman like uh, such the late Muhammad Ali, or even like Mike Tyson, or uh, even Floyd Mayweather, or even on uh, MMA, uh, or Conor, uh, Conor or uh, Khabib, they are people who they, they didn't start, you know, uh, with uh, a silver spoon in the mouth. Uh, everything was ready for them. When they get back from home, they have the food, etc. They have to fight. They really need to fight in, in, in for real. They have to fight for no money, not recognized, uh, didn't have anything. They have the parents. They have, of course, sometimes they have support. And for the people who didn't have support, for, so, for the people who didn't have the mother and the father or the brother who could support them, or sometimes they have a very uh, complicated family existence and relationship. 
they are fighters. So sports was a way where they put their whole energy and they go deep and go deep and go deep. In that case, they push the limit, they push the boundary. Don't you think they said, oh, I cannot make it? Huh? And if you put also this into a certain uh, political, uh, racial environment, it's even worse. So you're going to have to push your limit and your boundaries, but at the same time, it's not because you reach the top that it's over. When you reach what you think is the top, this is where you need to work more, to study more. At the moment you reach that moment of ah, roof, and you know the roof, recognize your limit, recognize your intellectual limits and boundaries. But at the same time, the fact of recognize them push you to know them. And when you know your enemy, then you can fight him, isn't it? Or you can learn how to um, avoid him or to overcome it. Here it is. That's a very important thing. There is no one master, artist, or even actors. Uh, if you look some of uh, the actors, great actors, anything didn't happen like that. They work like crazy. And still, even if they're in good, the best actor, like the best master, like the best student, like the, is the one who doesn't forget where he come from. And here it is. Once you reach the roof of your limit, don't forget where you come from. Never forget where you come from and how it was and why you did it. This will push you to go deeper and normally should teach you what is the most important in life with faith and love and the lessons.